Hi everyone, welcome to Cauldron Chemistry 101. Last night at Ghostly Night, we did a little cauldron chemistry, and I thought that we would do that again for the blog, talk about the different ingredients and ways that you could change it up and make your own recipe even. So, are we ready? Make certain that you have a towel for this because you will definitely need to be able to do different things and wipe things up as you make a mess. Okay, ready? I'm gonna switch over the camera. Okay, here's the recipe that we were using. It's a wonderful potion and you can do a lot of different things with it. The first thing that you're going to need is of course a cauldron. Um, if you're short of a cauldron or two, that's okay. You can always use it, maybe a cup or something like that to use. Um, we definitely don't need a spider either. We can just have him go away. <laughs> okay, once you have your container, and in our case, it's going to be a cauldron, we are going to want to add in our spider venom, which is just bubbles. We used one teaspoon of our spider venom, and we put that into the cauldron. Next, we wanted to add in some fairy dust because fairy dust is always fun. Um, and of course we use glitter for that. We also use some ground unicorn horn, which is more glitter. And then our starlight that we used are three red stars. And that all went into the cauldron. We're using a glow stick for our wand. And it also makes a very, very nice stirring stick. And even in the camera, you can see how it glitters. Makes it a lot of fun. Okay, the next ingredient that we had was crushed moonstone. Can you guess what that's gonna be? It's going to be this white powder. And the white powder is actually baking soda. I've also included about um, oh, a quarter teaspoon of some powdered paint, which is pink, and that I was calling dried dragon's blood. Certainly sounds more like more fun than just powdered paint. Anyway, in that goes, and we want to stir that up as well. One of the reasons why we put in the soap at the bottom is that we are able to mix it up so it doesn't stick all on the bottom because you can kind of see how it cakes, right? Okay, so we're going to clean off our wand here because you have to have a clean wand. And then add in our next ingredient, which is a squirt of eyes of newts, which is actually tears of eyes of newts, which is actually coloring, paint coloring. And we're adding it into a special elixir of mine. Can you guess what that might be? If you guess vinegar, you guess correctly. So there's about three tablespoons of vinegar in there with the food coloring or uh, watercolor paint. And we will add that in and see what happens. And oh my goodness, we have an explosion for our cauldron chemistry. We can see glitter, we can see paint, we can see tons of bubbles and we didn't have to stir or anything. Just mix that up if you want, but it's already pretty mixed up. Okay, well that went very quickly. Let's try doing the same experiment, the same ingredients, doing it slightly differently. We are going to start with our cauldron again. And let me find my towel. Please do this with a towel handy and in a place where it doesn't matter if the table or counter gets wet. Okay, there we go. So now we have our plate, we have our cauldron, and we have ingredients. And this time we're going to reverse the ingredients a little bit, okay? This time we're gonna start with the same amounts of everything but we're gonna put in our glitter. We're gonna put in our baking soda. 
and we are going to put our soap or bubbles. Oops, there just isn't much in there. There we go. There we go. Into our vinegar. So let's see what happens this time. Pour that in. And oh my goodness, look at that. We have an explosion <laughs> that went very at a fast rate there. And you can see our glitter, our stars, our bubbles, and I'm bubbling over even. So it makes a difference which ingredient you put in first, which one you put in last. It also makes a difference how much of each ingredient. If I were to use more vinegar, you are going to get more bubbles. If I used um, less vinegar, you're not going to get as much of an explosion. They this recipe has only one tablespoon of baking soda to three tablespoons of vinegar. That's actually, it should be more like maybe six tablespoons of vinegar. But since we have a very little cauldron and a very little area that I wanted all that liquid to stay in, we tried for a much smaller explosion. So there you have it. Cauldron Chemistry 101. I hope you had a lot of fun with it. Thanks for joining me.